Hi guys, welcome back to Tiny House Customs. In this three part video series, I'm going to be removing the carpet, uh, prepping the wood floors, sanding them, and refinishing them. So the first thing we got to do is make sure that there's hardwood floors under the carpet. There's a couple tools you're going to need to uh, remove carpet, all the tack strips and all the staples. Uh, the most important thing I think was these uh, bull nose pliers. These grab the staples and you just roll them right out. They're perfect for that. Uh, a hammer as well as a three quarter inch uh, chisel and I also used a quarter inch chisel. Uh, a utility knife and a pair of scissors to cut carpet and stuff like that. I also use a small head of the broom as well as a big broom. When you're taking carpet out you don't want to just rip into it and uh, start cutting it up into pieces and taking it out just in case that there was a piece of rotted wood underneath the carpet and they just used some plywood to patch it over and then you go and rip all this carpet out and then you got a big spot that needs to get hardwood floor replaced which is way more extensive. To make sure we got hardwood floor I'm going to go into a closet. Um, I'm just going to take a chisel and a utility knife. So all I'm going to do is just jab a chisel in there and pop it up like that. And it'll peel right back. And I'm seeing beautiful when I say beautiful, I mean beautiful hardwood flooring. Let's go check another spot and make sure we don't get uh, get too hard, too far ahead of ourselves. Right here, there's a there's a transition point from this carpet, so I'll definitely have a, a cut right here. I'm gonna just take a knife and put it in there. Cut that, and again, good hardwood floor under there. Now if you had some type of molding down here like a, um, a quarter round, uh, I, I would go ahead and remove all that. I'd take a utility knife, cut the paint, and then take a putty knife and some pry tools, and I'd remove that. But I don't have that kind of trim. I'll probably put something on that, put some kind of trim like that on after I'm all finished with the floors. I'm not sure I'm going to be doing this room definitely, so I'm going to start out by just cutting on this side of the, of the door. Um, eventually if I do leave this carpet in here, I'll end up cutting it right here and I'll put the strip right here. So I'm just going to give myself a couple extra inches. I don't want to cut into the floor, so I'm, I'm being sure not to cut into it. These metal tack strips should just pop right out. You're gonna be pulling staples for days, son. Now I want to make more manageable chunks, so I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Again, like I said before, if you get too far into this and you come across a piece of hardwood flooring that's been damaged and then been replaced with a piece of plywood, you're gonna be screwed. So uh, I advise you to be very cautious about removing it because. Like, I'm already past that point of going back, you know? After I took that piece out, I realized that if I just cut straight down the center here all the way, I'll be able to take this out in, in two chunks. So I cut that strip. Should be able to just rip this out. To remove these metal strips, you could use a, a nail puller. Uh, I can't find mine, so I gotta come up with a different way. Definitely things to look for is look for high wear and tear on your carpet and I'll tell you that the hardwood floor is going to be the worst directly under that. Especially if it's right next to the uh, outside door that comes in. Oh, I'm bleeding. I'm gushing. Uh, damn it. So yesterday I was working on a project and I cut my hand pretty bad, so this is my makeshift band-aid construction grade. Won't go anywhere. So let's get back to the covered floors. Oh, I gotta clean the blood up, I guess. So going into my basement, I've noticed that there's this little lump right here, which I'm kind of concerned that... I'm not sure what the hardwood floor is going to do right here. So I'm going to cut it right here and be safe. Oh, 
what is the threshold? Some of these smaller scrap pieces you can just lay in there to roll up with the uh, with the huge fork. Now the foam underlayment, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. It doesn't cut well with a knife. Again, this is just a rough cut. I'll go back and make a finer, final, fine cut. At this point you want to make sure you got nothing else to do today because you're probably going to end up getting drunk doing this because this is going to be awful. Now these are bull nose pliers. These staples that they used, it'll just grab on. Don't pinch too hard and just roll it like that. That was one square foot and that took me about 10 minutes. As you can see, I'll be here for the rest of the day. When it comes to removing these staples, sometimes the bull nose won't grab them because they're too low. So if you go in and just take a, uh, a quarter inch chisel and just come in and roll it, what that'll do is make it easier for these to come in and, and pull right out. These hardwood floors are actually in really good shape. And you can see that at one time there was a uh, quarter round molding here, which I'll end up putting back on there. When you're using this chisel, you want this bevel that's on the chisel towards the um, hardwood flooring. That way you can push down and it won't dig into the floor. So you start out just to get under it, and then you push down, and you keep pushing while you're hitting, and then pry out. Start up high, one hit, push down a little, push down a little more, and up. Here's a perfect example of where a staple's gone too far down where the bull nose pliers won't grab it. So just take the uh, a quarter inch chisel, put it on there, and it'll pop right up, and you can grab it. Look at that carpet. Can you imagine that being in style? Ow. I think the most important thing when doing this is that you complete every section before you move on to the next section. My alcoholic tip of the day is place your beer about as far as you can reach away. And you can't drink that until you've cleaned all this up all the way up to this point. I guess that's not an alcoholic tip because that's being conservative. Oh, that was the greatest piece right there. So I think because the beer's in the way, I should get to drink it now. And then I'll move it again, right? Like I said earlier, you got to be careful when you're cutting in your carpet. This was from a previous contractor who came in here and cut the carpet to take out the uh, the original carpet. You might be able to see that fine line right here, which will be fine when I sand it. It'll come right out, hopefully. Talking to the homeowner, and he thinks that the carpet in here should come out, and I'll refinish the hardwood flooring in this room as well. And they also want to take the carpet out of this room, which is uh, the second bedroom. Both these rooms need to be emptied out. All right, now that the room's empty, I'm ready to rip the carpet out. I'm gonna take this out in two sections. I'm just gonna cut straight down the center here and take out two big chunks. Now, right now is a good time to take a mental note of where all the staples are. There's a seam in the, uh, in the underfloor padding and there's staples all along here. When I'm going to take all these tack strips and the staples out, I just gotta remember I gotta check here. There's no staples in the middle here or right here, so it should be pretty easy taking these staples out. So I was just messing around, and I think I found a quicker way to take this stuff out. Uh, the only thing that is that I got wood here, so this is a little stronger than if you had sheetrock. But if you had like a big, uh, a big um, baseboard trim right there. This would work. Or you could use a piece of like quarter inch plywood behind it. 
So right there is the nail. I'm gonna go right next to the nail, pop it, it'll break right to the next nail. Then I'm just gonna go back and pull the nails. Once you're done pulling all the nails and you have all this mess here, instead of sweeping it towards where you're gonna be pulling more nails and stuff, uh, I recommend sweeping all this back to where you know you've already done and it's already been cleaned. This way all that stuff's not getting in your way. To do this whole room, to take the carpet out, tax strips, uh, about an hour and a half, just to do this one room. And this is about, I'd say about 12 by 12 maybe. All right, guys, I'm pretty much done. I just got one more room to do, but I'm not going to bore you with all that video. I wanted to thank you for watching. I also wanted to apologize for my audio during this video. I was trying something new, and it didn't work. So the next video in this series, it might not be the next video, I'm going to be going in here, filling all these holes with some good wood filler, and then coming through with a belt sander and also an edging sander. And I'll be sanding the living room, dining room, hallway, and the one bedroom. In the video after that, I'll be applying a finish to the floor. So to see those two videos, you can click here and here. I'm going to try this. I've never done it before. If there's nothing there and nothing here, those videos aren't up yet. If you're on a mobile device, you can also check down in the description below, and there'll be a link to those videos there as well. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to make a cut. Peanut. I just want to be a movie star. Hey, I love. Oh, good love, love, so much love. I don't love you. Okay. Peanut, go in your crate. I don't, what did I do wrong? I didn't do nothing wrong. There you have it. What do we have? I don't have anything. I need to do, I want something, you know? Like food, cookies, trays, any of them will be good for me. Thanks for watching, guys.